Big Nate, the gerbil ate my homework. Boylan can purse. Mister Rosa, you're back. I am indeed. Hello, Nate. Oh man, that was so freaky when we watched them put you in the ambulance. I mean, you're the last teacher I'd want to see wheeled out of school on a stretcher. The first is Mrs. Godfrey, obviously. The second would be. Let's stop there, shall we? So, what happened, Mister Rosa? Why did he go to the hospital? I got dizzy. I was in the faculty lounge, and the room started spinning. I was completely disoriented. Turns out there was something wrong with my ears. Your ears? What? That they're so big? No. An inner ear infection? Yup, and it led to a nasty case of vertigo. I had all the classic symptoms. I felt sick, dizzy, and fatigued. I had no idea where I was. So you call that vertigo, huh? Uh huh. I call it social studies. Well, medical terminology is always changing. Okay, gang. I know you started your self-portraits while I was out. We'll continue with those today. You've all made so much progress. Splish, splish, slop, slop, slosh. Some have progressed further than others. I couldn't get my hair right, so I decided to paint some zombies. Nate, you're supposed to be doing a self-portrait. I know. But I wasn't feeling it. Did Van Gogh paint that other people told him to paint? Did Picasso? Ah,、uh, you're comparing yourself to two of the greatest artists of all time. Yeah, they're the only ones I could think of. I've missed this kid. And I like the background. Mr. Rosa, it's your first day back. You must be tired. Well, I am a little bushed, of course. You just got over a major illness. You rest for a bit. I'll take over your role of dispensing constructive criticism. What a completely inappropriate idea, Jeremy. That painting is sort of a dumpster fire. Are you guys nuts? There's still snow on the ground. Just getting ready for the season, Lucas. Wanna play? Go get your glove. Nah, I'm done with baseball. I'm switching to lacrosse. What? Why? Dude, lacrosse is more fun. But. Lucas, use your head. Think of your future. My future? Let's say you grow up to play pro lacrosse. The top players make what? Fifty grand? I don't really know. And let's say I grow up to play pro baseball, where the top guys earn thirty million. Doesn't my future look better than yours? No, because you're not good enough to play pro baseball. It's a little early to say that, don't you think? It's ten thirty. I'm okay with it. Hi, Mrs. Cherokee. Oh dear, what have you done this time, Nate? I drew a picture of Satchel on my desk during math. What kind of Satchel? Satchel the dog from Get Fuzzy the comic strip. I never read comic strips. You know that's abnormal, right? Except the jumble. Does that count? You don't read the funnies. 
I'm afraid comic strips just aren't for me. Wow, Mrs. Cherokee, we're opposites. I read every single strip on the comics page, even the lousy ones. Why on earth would you read something you know isn't good? Said the woman who's halfway through a romance novel called Tsunami of Desire. It's for my book club. How come you don't like comics, Mister Cherokee? How come you do? Because they're funny, a lot funnier than this romance novel of yours. Claudia didn't know which was pounding harder. The tropical surf on her heart, once the ruggedly handsome loin tamer, had always been her catnip. She gazed into his magnetic green eyes, which burned like two tennis balls beneath his auburn unibrow. Oh, how she'd missed him during the years he'd spent in the Congo. Perfecting his perilous craft with the help of a pygmy cat whisperer. I take it back. This is hilarious. I think it's time for you to bond with your desk. I still can't believe you don't read the comics. They're the first thing I read in the newspaper. I go comics, horoscope, sports. That's my routine. What's your routine, Mrs. Cherokee? Obituaries, dear Abby and the Jumble. Okay, that's solid. I can respect that. If there's somebody I know in the obituaries, I skip the Jumble. Wanna hear something unbelievable? Mrs. Cherokee never reads comic strips. Why is that so unbelievable? I don't read them either. Wait, what? But she has an excuse. She's old. You're a kid, and kids read comics. Not me. Don't like 'em. Mrs. Cherokee, I'd like to report a crime against humanity. Well then, how lucky that we are already in detention. This is ridiculous. Am I the only person in this room who reads the funnies? I read the funnies. Yes, Chester, my man. I read Bethany. Chuckle. Yeah, I read that one too because of how lame it is. It's so stupid. It's so cheesy. I like it. And underrated. Very, very underrated. How's that noise, Gordy? Ellen, great, Graham. The two of you have been together quite a while now. Uh huh. Maybe we'll end up married some day, like you and Gramps. It's possible. You're about the same age we were when we got together. Really? You met in high school? You sure did. I remember it vividly. It was in the school library. There's a group of boys I didn't know sitting at a large table, and he noticed Gramps right away. It would have been hard not to notice him. He was the only one making fart noises with his armpit, and the rest is history. Smooth, Gramps. Ready for the cartooning club meeting after school? Am I ever? What's so special about today's meeting? Mr. Rosa invited a professional cartoonist to come talk to us. Yeah, she's won a bunch of awards for her graphic novels. Hi, handsome. Hey, Trudy. I can't wait to go roller skating this afternoon. What? Yes, right. Trouble in paradise. And we'll meet everyone at Wacky Wheels at three thirty. Uh huh. Great. You do remember we made plans to roller skate, right? 
Of course. How could I forget? How could I forget? No idea that I'm loving the dramatic tension. Nuts! Why did I agree to roller skate with Trudy and her friends today of all days? A real cartoonist is visiting the cartooning club, and I want to be there. I'm missing the chance of a lifetime. Guess there's nothing to do but to make the best of it. Wacky wheels, where the good times are raw. So. What size skates, boys? Nine, eight, eight and a half. What size, son? Six. Snicker, haha, <laughs> six. This isn't a good fit. Nate, why weren't you at cartooning club yesterday? Oh, I was busy after school. Well, the rest of us were treated to a great. Presentation by Faith Bleeker, a gifted graphic novelist. I'm sorry you had to miss it. Yeah, I'm missing a lot of stuff lately. Time for a celebrity interview with Biff Biffwell. Greetings, friend. Today I'm chatting with the newest season, Spring. What's up, Biff? Wow. Spring, you're younger than I thought you'd be. Chuckle. Well, I was just born yesterday. How's the job going so far? Great. Almost everyone appreciates my warmth and sunny disposition. Ah,、uh, you said almost everyone. Right. The guy who had the job before me isn't too happy. Is that old man Winter? He's in total denial that his time is over. It's not over, punk. Not yet. Yes, it is. Let it go, dude. No, I'll show the world I've still got some life left in me. Oh, come on. Hey, lunch later? Yeah, sure, Trudy. Okay. See you at our regular table. Ah,、uh, how about we sit somewhere else today? You could come sit with me and some other sixth graders, Francis, Terry, Didi, Chad. What for? So you want us to eat lunch with all your friends? Yeah, they're super nice. I'm sure they are, but they're all sixth graders. I mean seventh. No offense, but why would I hang out with a bunch of sixth graders? Because I asked you to. The whole time we've been together, Trudy, we've hung out with your friends. We eat lunch with them every day. We go to their parties. We do stuff with them after school. Why can't we spend some time with my friends? I don't think I want to. Look, Nate. I'm new here. I'm still trying to make friends and figure out where I fit in. And obviously, the kids I'm trying to fit in with are kids I'm around all the time. Kids from my own grade. It makes no sense for me to spend time with sixth graders. I need to build friendships with seventh graders. Okay. You'd better get to it then, Nate. Wait, what's happening here? We're breaking up, Trudy. But that's stupid. We like each other. You might think it's stupid, but I don't. I miss my friends, and if you're willing to get to know them, you'd see why. So long, Trudy and I just broke up. What? Really? Yeah, and I'm pretty bummed about it. Hi there, but not too bummed. You gonna finish that brownie, Mr. Staples? Can I skip class today? Skip class? Why, Nate? My girlfriend and I just split up. I mean, 
It literally just happened. It was pretty emotional. I don't think I can, you know, focus on maths and stuff. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear that, because class is going to be extra special today. You're going to play math with Jeopardy. We'll form teams and hand out prizes to the winners, and we'll have snacks too. I brought chips and salsa, and Mrs. Shipolsky made some of her famous fudge. If you're too heartbroken to join in, though, I'll understand. Heartbroken? Uh, yeah. But I'm ready to pick up the pieces and live again. Glad to hear it. So, how Trudy Dumpy? Did she let you down easy? What? Wow! Trudy didn't dump me. I dumped her. Right. I did. Why is it so unbelievable that I'd break up with Trudy? It just seems more likely that she dump you. I mean, she's a seventh grader. She's pretty. She's smart, and you're, you're um. Actually, what's unbelievable is that she was going out with you in the first place. Heard that? Sorry, guys. It's true. I'm the one who broke up with Trudy, not the other way around. And you know why? Because I actually missed you, clowns. That's why. We've missed you too. I knew it. But it's wearing off quickly. Is it true? Did you and Trudy split up? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, Nate. You must be hurting. Thanks, Dee Dee. Ahem. <clears throat> Pay up, Chad. Rats. The over slash under was six months. I've become a betting line. So, Dee Dee, I get the feeling you didn't think Trudy and I would last. I had a hunch. I'm fabulous at sensing other people's emotions. I'm like an empath. Aha!、Uh -huh. An empath who I can see Lord Diana Troy on Star Trek: The Next Generation. If that's as dorky as it sounds, then no, no, no. Troy's not dorky. Wesley Crusher is dorky. Fess up, Dee Dee. How do you know that Trudy and I would break up? I told you, I sensed it. After all, it's my job to channel people's behavior and emotions. Wait, what do you mean? It's your job. Hello, I'm an actress. Or have you forgotten my sizzling performance as Mrs. Potts in the drama club's production of Beauty and the Beast? I've tried, but no. Mrs. Godfrey, Nate's grinding his teeth again. Stop it, Nate! I can't. Ex. Excuse me. I mean, I don't try to grind my teeth. It just happens. Noises don't just happen. This one does. I don't even realize I'm doing it. So you're claiming you can't control the sounds coming out of your body? Yes. Well, that is the most ridiculous. Uh huh. Carry on. I'm a bachelor again, Mrs. Cherokee. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear that, Nate. Yeah, sorry. I guess the romance just ran its course. Well, if that's the case, it's better to find out now instead of forty-eight years too late. Struck a nerve. Going out with Trudy was fun, but I got to admit, there's nothing like being single. It'll be good to, you know, get back into circulation. Circulation, yes. Circulation is key. Lord knows my circulation isn't what it used to be. 
Sooner or later, it all comes back to our very convenience. My legs look like a road atlas. Goodness! Listen to me rambling on about my problems. I'm sorry, Nate. That's okay. No, it's not. You're trying to tell me something, and I changed the subject to myself. Please continue. I was just saying that maybe Trudy and I weren't really meant for each other. Aha! Like my daughter and her no good boyfriend. I could have told her he was a loser, but did she ask me? Heading back to my desk now. I was trying to talk with Mrs. Cherokee today, and she kept making it all about her. Ha! Huh, how ironic! What do you mean? That's what you do. You're the king of talking about yourself. What? Excuse me, but I'm not the king of talking about myself. I'm the king of lots of other stuff. Like cartooning, prank day, your mama smackdowns. He's not talking about himself again. Shocker. How can you say that I always talk about myself? Because you do. Let's do a test. Good idea, Teddy. Yeah, let's have a non-Nate conversation. Okay, how about this? My uncle Pedro is buying me a new baseball glove this weekend. Nice. Speaking of baseball, remember that amazing catch I made last year? Ah、uh-huh. ha! You guys really think I talk about myself a lot? Only all the time. Hehe. <laughs> okay, okay, maybe I do. Sorry about that. It's just, it's just that you're so darn fascinating. Yes, jackpot. Yes, that's a five. Uh, Dad, on the way here, you said you're going to play a legitimate round of golf today. You told me to speak up if I saw you break any rules. Well, you hit your tree shot from outside the tee box. That's a two-stroke penalty. You also hit into the water. That's another stroke. You moved some branches out of the way on your third shot. That's two more strokes, plus another stroke for the second ball you lost. So instead of five, should I write eleven? Uh, you could. Or you could ride five, and we could stop for pizza on the way home. A caddy's got to do what a caddy's got to do. That's the best I played in ages. Jenny, did you hear Nate and Trudy broke up? Oh no! Now he'll probably start chasing after me again. Why, Didi? You are saying, why, Didi? Ahem, a little upset that I didn't say hello to you, Jenny. Why would I be? In case you've forgotten, Dee Dee, I'm going out with Arthur. I don't like Nate. I've n- never liked Nate, but you've always loved the fact that he liked you. Ew. Look, Jenny. All I'm saying is that Nate was crazy about you for a really long time, and he got used to that. He doesn't enjoy being told how wonderful they are. I mean, when people tell me what an amazing actress I am, I eat it up. Except nobody says that. Said、so、the girl who didn't get the role. Of gold in Fiddler on the Roof. Wanna hear how I know that Trudy and I weren't meant to be together? If I must, because I don't miss her. I bounced back like a champ. Meanwhile, she's shattered, and yet somehow she's found a way to cope. Obviously, she's in denial. 
You know, even though it didn't work out between Trudy and me, I still think dating her was a major positive. How so? From a maturity standpoint, going out with a seventh grader taught me how to think and act older. Yes, Nate Wright has grown up. Seconds later, he has, however, maintained his youthful sense of wonder. Great, Kim. I heard young Trudy broke up. So I'm here to offer you some consolation, but remember, I'm only doing this as a friend. Try to ignore the obvious animal attraction between us. Okay. Come and get him. Come and get what? Homemade cookies, fresh out of the oven. Uh, they don't smell like cookies. Not like ordinary cookies. They're my own recipe. Forget how they smell; they taste fantastic. Shik shik, krk krk krk, chong 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 chong, whack 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 whack. I'll take your word for it. Nonstick bakeware, ha!、Huh. How come nobody ever calls you Frank? Because that's not my name. Yeah. But plenty of guys named Francis shorten it to Frank, and not me. I mean, look at me. Can you imagine me with another name? May I speak, haha, frankly? Suddenly, I can't stop thinking about hot dogs. You both need to calm down. Let's think of a new name for Francis. What? Wait. Why are you doing this? Because yesterday you asked me to imagine you with a different name, and unlike you, I've actually given it some thought. But relax, I'm not going outside your comfort zone. I'm sticking with boys' names that sound like girls' names: Ashley, Skylar, Mika, Chris. How about Leslie? Or Leslie with a Z. Kill me now. We are brainstorming new names for Francis. No, we are not. It's just for fun, your Nimrod. Don't you ever think of other names for yourself? I do. See, Chadus. That's the spirit, Chad. What's your alternate name, Tad? What we have here is a serious lack of imagination. Why are you so focused on me changing my name? I'm not focused on it. I just think it's fun to speculate about other names. That's all. Didn't your parents consider other names besides Francis? How should I know? I wasn't even alive yet. If I hadn't been Nate, know what I would have been? Quiet. Now, Ethan, how weird is that? Here's a fun game. What three words best describe you? Ooh, I love this kind of thing. Athletic, loyal, hilarious, musical, optimistic, dramatic, brilliant. Rebellious, dangerously sexy. That's four words, Pinhead. See item two. Mrs. Godfrey, a few of us were playing sort of a game earlier. The object is to come up with three words that best describe yourself, but only three words. One, sit. Two, down. Three, now. The line you're looking for is "Oh, how I hate her." That'll work. Hi, Mr. Ostis. Hello, mate. How's the game? Coach Callahan benched me. Oh dear, what happened? I missed a fly ball. Really? That doesn't sound fair. Little league coaches shouldn't punish kids for making the occasional error. I've seen you play. You're a good outfielder. If you missed a fly ball, you 
He must have had a very good reason. He was watching an episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation on his phone during the game. Not just any episode. It was the one where Captain Picard meets the babe from X Men. You're just starting the homework now. God phrase about to collect it. I know, I know. I forgot about it. I'm never gonna finish it. I need to come up with a good excuse and fast. Sherman, help me. Now what? What are you doing? Gerbils shred paper, right? So all I have to do is <clears throat> accidentally drop my unfinished homework in Sherman's cage. Whoops! You're actually going the Gerbil ate my homework route. Chew, chew. Why did it get dark? Yes, it's working. Sherman is shredding my homework. Now I'll show this to Mrs. Godfrey, and she'll have no choice but to give me an extension. How's it feel to be drawn into a tawdry web of lies and deceit? It's a living. And then I absent-mindedly put my homework on the edge of Sherman's cage. Uh huh. It must have fallen in. By the time I realized it, Sherman had turned my completely finished homework into a pile of confetti. And what were you doing while Sherman was destroying your paper? Uh, reading. And yet, you still found the time. To stand by the cage, chanting "shred, shred, shred." I was reading aloud. Nate, did he actually think I'd believe this absurd fairy tale, concocting some ridiculous excuse involving the class girl is much worse than not doing the homework in the first place. I expect more of you. Yeah, I expect more of me too. Give me five minutes to think up a better story. Sorry, I made you part of my lame homework scheme, Sherman. I wasn't trying to get in trouble or anything. Yeah, I'd hate getting in trouble. Then I might get put in some kind of jail. That was ironic, Gerbil humor. By the way, it looks like he's smiling bitterly. Mrs. Godfrey, take a look at the kids filing into your classroom today. Notice how exhausted they all look. It's May, the home stretch of the school year. We are beat. For eight months, we've done nothing but learn facts and memorize names. We can't absorb anything new. Our brains are too full. Too full? Hmm. We'd better empty them out then. Pop quiz, folks. Oh, how I despise her. Have you seen how much money the last couple Avengers movies have made? A ton, so. So all we have to do is invent a new superhero franchise, and we'll be rich. Good luck. All the best superheroes have been thought of already, or have they? Chad. Chad, I've got exciting news. I'm going to make you a star. Yeah, it's a good thing, Chad. Sorry, those were the exact words my gram used when she enrolled me in tap class. Here's the scoop, Chad. Teddy and I want to make a superhero movie starring you, me. But I'm no superhero. I'm not all muscly and stuff like that. 
that's fine. Yeah, we see you as a new kind of hero, one who depends not on strength or speed, but on other skills. But the only skill I have is playing the elbow. We can work with that. Trust us, Chad. We are filmmakers. Now that you've agreed to star in our superhero movie, Chad, you'll need a costume. Ooh, I can help. There's a ton of stuff in the drama club storage closet. Any type of costume you could think of. Come on, I'll show you. Thanks, Didi. Soon. Watch out, bad guys. Not what you're looking for, Chad. But it's comfy. How's this? Much better. Now that's a superhero. Let's start filming. Hold it. We still have to figure out what to call him. How about Loser Boy? Oh, ignore him, dude. When we win a People's Choice Award, we'll rip him from the podium. Say hello to the world's most dynamic new superhero. I give you Mega Chad. What makes him dynamic? If you're going to make a new superhero movie, shouldn't he have some sort of, you know, special abilities? OMG! Look, that is adorable. I just want to hug you. Behold the power of Mega Chad! It was right here. I'm sorry, Anna. I haven't seen your notebook, but I have my notebook. Nate Roy Private Eye at your service. How do you find it? I simply used my powers of deductive reasoning. I overheard you saying your notebook was missing, so I did a thorough search of the library. Somebody obviously moved it as a joke, just a harmless prank. Uh huh. Or someone could have taken it to copy my homework and left cheese doodle stains on all the pages. There's entirely too much deductive reasoning going on around here. Principal Nichols, will you be in our movie? Movie? The Adventures of Mega Chad. I see you in the role of the police chief. You'll play an overworked administrator, slightly burned out and stressed as your beloved city crumbles around you. I think I can manage that. And could you lose the moustache? It's so eighties. Okay, let's rehearse. Here are your scripts, kids. You summon me, chief. Yes, Mega Chad. I've disturbing news. The evil, uh, Nate. Are you basing the villain on a real life person? What do you mean? You've named her Mrs. Godslay, psychotic she devil. And do you know anyone with that name? No. I know what you're up to, Nate, and you can put it out of your mind. You will not create a movie villain based on Mrs. Godfrey. Okay, okay. But the adventures of Mega Chad need some sort of bad guy. Where can I find someone evil enough to? Point. Gina, Gina, wanna be in the movie Teddy and I are making? What? Why would I want to be in your stupid movie? Because it's going to be awesome, and you'll have a great role, and ahem, <clears throat> a great co-star. Co-star? Who? Chad. Kerswang. The villain? You want me to play the villain? You'll be Venoma, Mega Chad's arch enemy. 
Forget it. I don't want to be some criminal. Gina, the villain is always the juiciest role. Plus, the script includes some romantic tension between you and Mega Chad. It does. It does. We are ready to start shooting, Dee Dee. Wanna be in our movie? I thought you'd never ask. Ahem. <clears throat> What role do you have in mind? Oh, we just need random people for crowd scenes. What? Gasp! You want me to be an extra? Yeah. Have you forgotten I'm the president of the drama club? You make it kind of hard to. Principal Nichols. Hello, Nate. What can I do for you? Well, you know how you're always telling us we can accomplish anything if we try hard enough. Do you really believe that? I certainly do. I've seen it happen countless times. With enough effort, a kid can achieve anything. Anything? Absolutely. The key's effort, Nate. Effort brings results. Okay, good. Cause my dad packed me this lame lunch, and I haven't been able to find anyone to trade with me. I've tried everyone except you. Uh, what is this? No idea. See ya. The Adventures of Mega Chad. Quiet on the set. Scene one. Police headquarters. Action. Ring. Hello. Cut. That was all wrong. Pump the brakes, big guy. We can't all be superstars. I just got a call from the state penitentiary, Mega Chad. The evil Venoma has escaped. Egad, my arch enemy. She blames me for sending her to prison. There's no telling how far she'll go to to. Uh, to get her revenge and cut, Chad. What's wrong? My leotard is giving me a wedgie. Let's take five for a wardrobe adjustment. Hold it, Gina. You can't wear your glasses over your mask. Yeah, Venoma doesn't wear glasses, but I can't see without him. Don't worry about it. I'll give you directions from the sidelines. Wump! Look out for that wall. Okay, guys. In this scene, Mega Chad and Venoma have their epic showdown and action. So, Venoma, you're up to your old tricks again. I see. You're adorable. Cut. Well, he is. You seem to have forgotten, Venoma, that it's my job to protect the citizens of Slumber City. Cut! Wow, I smell Oscar. An Oscar? Really? Was that good? No, I mean I literally smell Oscar. That's nasty, Oscar. Lunch made me gassy. So sue me. Scene ten: climatic death struggle. Action! The people of Slumber City are doomed. Mega Chad, even you can't save them. Did you miss the part where I said climatic death struggle? Hmm. Help! That does it. You're coming with me, Spitzy. You're spending way too much time with cats. It's time for you to bond with other dogs and learn about the joys of canine companionship. Okay, we are here. Look, Spitzy. Dogs everywhere. Don't be nervous. Go. Have fun. Play. Worf. Worf. Snarl. Yip. Grr. Growl, yip yap, whimper. 
I can't believe this. Neither can I. Priscilla is usually afraid of other dogs. I finished the editing. The Adventures of Mega Chad is ready to go on YouTube. Yes. Now sit back and wait for this thing to go viral. Uh, uh, at chew. And speaking of viral, wipe. Ring. Yes. Free period. Let's see the computer lab. Yeah, we can see how many people have watched our movie on YouTube. Four isn't a lot, especially since we've both watched it twice already. And so Teddy and I put our movie on YouTube, but nobody's watching it. Oh dear, maybe I can help. Sure, you could watch it. That would give us five views. Now, I mean I could tweet a link to your movie. What? Mrs. Shipolsky? You're on Twitter? I have 22 million followers. 22 m m m million? Is that good? Mrs. Shipulski, you have 22 million Twitter followers. Uh-huh, I tweet about all kinds of things. But that just seems impossible. I mean, Twitter's top 100 most followed people are famous, like Katy Perry and Taylor Swift and, and Geraldine Shipulski. Ooh, I've passed Pitbull. Mrs. Shipulski, you have so many Twitter followers. It's insane. You're a celebrity. Oh, sure. I'm not a celebrity. I'm just a school secretary who tweets about my job, my family, my book club. Yeah, but look, all these famous people are your fans. Snoop Dogg wants to party with you. No can do. I'm a cat person. I can't believe Mrs. Shipulski, of all people, is a Twitter sensation. I'm going to check out her feed. Wow, look at all these tweets and retweets. There's dozens of them just from today. Where does she find the time to do her job? Meanwhile, don't you have some foiling to do? At some point, ring. Before you leave, people, hand in your homework. Here, Mr. Galvin. Good gravy, not again. Nate, I'm tired of you handing in work that's covered in food stains. Grease, chocolate, soda, ketchup, there's no excuse for this mess. When I return this to you tomorrow, you'll see that I've deducted 10 points from your score for sloppiness. Maybe that'll teach him not to. Ah, Clunk sploosh. My coffee got all over. Drip, 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 drip. Next day. My dog ate your homework. Oh no, here comes Whitey. Why, oh no? Because, Dee Dee, he's going to give us what's up hugs. So, I like his what's up hugs. What's up? Crack. Woo, my back feels so much better. What's up? My back's fine. What's up? Oof. How come you're so into hugs, Whitey? It's just my jam, dude. I hug everyone. Everyone? Everyone. Even him? Oh. You, you want me to hug him? Hey, you just claimed you hug everyone. Yeah, but no stalling, Whitey. Time to get this party started. Y'all, Chester, Whitey wants to see you.
Stomp, 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 stomp. Time to put your hogs where your mouth is. What do you want? Um, hi, Chester. I just wanted to say, what's up? Crunch. I don't like when people touch me. I'll keep that in mind. Nice try, Whitey. What happened? Your boyfriend. That's what happened. Hehe. <laughs> Whitey tried to give Chester a what's up hug and Chester went off. Oh, sorry that happened. Thanks, Kim. Let me comfort you. Now, him, comfort him. Kim, knock it off. Stop trying to hug me. Go hug Chester. He's your boyfriend. Exactly. I like making him jealous. Well, there's got to be a better way of making him jealous than hugging me. Hmm, you're right. Pucker up. Now! After we warm up, I want to practice my slider. Your slider? What do you need a slider for? You're an outfielder. Most of the time, yeah. But what if Couch brings me in as a relief pitcher? A slider will complement my killer fastball. Kids our age aren't supposed to throw breaking balls. They put too much stress on your arm. What are we talking about? Sliders, Chad. Ooh, yum. The ones at Burger Barn are Awesome! Jumbo plate of sliders? Right here. Nice pitch, Chad. To prepare yourself for the final exam, Nate, I want you to join a study group. Research indicates that most students benefit from working in teams. Aha! Most students, but not all. Has it ever occurred to you, Mrs. Godfrey, that I'm not like most students? It occurs to me pretty much on a daily basis. I'm of a lone wolf type. Liam, Zoe, Nate will be joining your study group. Wait, what? Why do I have to study with them? Why can't I study with Francis and Teddy? I crammed for the midterm with those guys and it went fine. Fine? You got a C, Teddy got a C plus, and Francis got PTSD. I'm scared. Grumble. Looks like we're starting together. Uh, okay, let's go over our method. What do you mean? You know, like our strategy, our approach to studying. Liam and I always study together. We've got it down to a science. Science? News flash, geniuses. We're supposed to be working on social studies. We may have to dump it down. The final exam covers nine chapters, so each of us will summarize three of them. Here are my class notes on chapters 10 through 12, and here are mine on 13 through 15. Here, this is a drawing of a duck on roller skates. But on the back I wrote something about whatever war we studied. And remember the time she had a piece of cottage cheese on her face for the whole day? Ha <laughs> ha! Listening to his stories about Mrs. Godfrey isn't helping us study. I know, but he is pretty funny. Don't you see what's happening, Zoe? He's disrupting our process. He's poisoning our whole approach. He's toxic. You don't smell so great yourself, Liam. Okay, Liam. You can stop whining that I'm not contributing enough to your little study group. I knew I'd finished this. I just had to dig it out of my locker. That's all. 
What is it? My summary of chapter sixteen. Chapter sixteen is just like chapter fifteen, but with fewer pictures. Well, enough work. How about a snack break? Wah, Miranda. Hey, what's wrong? I can't remember where I left my dolly. Aha! Never fear. Nate is here. I'm great at finding stuff. Oh ho! Here it is. Zing! Now I remember where I left her. Gina, hey! I just heard better luck next year. Huh? I mean, being runner-up is really good, but runner-up, Dee Dee, what are you talking about? Oh, sorry, I, I assumed you knew. Knew about what? The Student of the Year award. Gawk! You got the Student of the Year award. You? Yup. You and I were the finalists, and they chose me. But you're an idiot. Your grades stink. It's not just grades. It's about being a good citizen. What? How are you a good citizen? Earlier today, I recycled a can. It's true. I saw it. This is not happening. I just can't believe that you, of all people, won the Student of the Year award. I want details. When did this happen? Today, fish, which, by the way, is prank day. Punked much, Gina. You should have seen the look on Gina's face. Ha <laughs> ha! Sounds like a great prank. Too bad you didn't have time to play any pranks on the teachers. Yeah, fire ants, fire ants. Who says I didn't? What's this? Someone left a cake on my desk. Have a great summer, Mrs. Godfrey. Well, isn't that ploof? Did I just hear a ploof? It's a distinct possibility. Someone released a colony of fire ants in Mr. Staples' classroom. That's awful. And a booby-trapped cake was left on Mrs. Godfrey's desk. Wow! Sorry to hear that. Please give them my best. I have a feeling you did that already. Have a good summer, Teddy. Listen to what Tasha wrote in my yearbook. Nate, you're a nice kid. Tasha the haughty thinks I'm nice. Tasha? Yeah, she signed mine too. Oh ho!、Oh. What did she write to you, Chad? Let's hear it, dear Chad. Second semester was so fun. I can't believe we didn't know each other until we did that science project together. Remember how hard we laughed during those two weeks? You were an absolute riot. We have to see each other this summer. Otherwise, I'll miss you too much. Will you visit me at my family's lake house? Thanks for being such an awesome friend. That's sweet, Chad. Good for you. Continued on page thirty-seven. Behold the power of Chad. This is so lame. The yearbook. I think it's good. The yearbook's fine. It's the way people sign it. That's bad. Half the kids who saw in my yearbook wrote, "Have a good summer." I mean, how about a little creativity? When I sign someone's yearbook, I put some effort into it, like the picture of yourself on horseback he drew on my title page. I call that added value. I think I got all the teachers to sign my yearbook. Not me. I'm missing Mr. Rosa. By the time I got to his classroom, he'd already left. But that's okay. I can always drop in on him at his summer job. Hey, he gave me chocolate jimmies. I wanted rainbow jimmies. I'm terribly sorry, sir. 
Hi, Mr. Rouser. What's in that sweet licks? Not much. Just doing my usual summer gig. Scooping ice cream for minimum wage, dealing with the rude customers who can't be bothered to treat me with respect. Yeah, cool. Hey, can I get two scoops of maple walnut in a sugar cone? Did I mention the rude customers? And on a related note, I'd like to start a tab. I got to tell you, Mr. Rosa, you look kind of beat. I am. Working at an ice cream shop is exhausting. Really? Why? Okay, Daisies of Troop 5, who wants ice cream? We do. It just is. Mmm, maple walnut. Yep, a solid traditional flavor. Unlike all the designer flavors people expect nowadays. Like what? Well, like, I'm trying not to be devastated by the fact you don't have mango chutney, sea salt on your menu. Try harder. Mr. Rosa, will you sign my yearbook? That's the whole reason I came down here. Really? Well, if you made a special trip on my account, the least I can do is give you a special signature. Here you go. Uh, thanks. Signing in butterscotch sauce is kind of cool, I guess, but these pages will stick together forever. So long, Dad. I'm going to Teddy's. Did you clean your room like I asked? Well, I... (laughs) <coughs> Are you okay? <coughs> I'll get some water. <coughs> here, here. <coughs> Better? Well, yeah, I think I swallowed a bug or something. But it's all good now. See ya, Dad. Okay, bud. Well, that was dramatic. So you just randomly started coughing? It's called a diversion. What are you doing, Francis? Putting this bumper sticker on my mom's car. My child is an honor old student at PS38. All oh, that is so obnoxious. What's obnoxious about it? It's conceited. You'd never see me putting a sticker like that on our car. I'm too humble. So is your grade point average. It's obnoxious, I'm telling you. No, it isn't. Let's ask Chad. Chad, what would you think if you saw a bumper sticker on my dad's car saying, My child is an honor roll student. I think your sister made the honor roll. (laughs) Ha 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 ha. That's harsh, Chad. Why are honor roll kids the only ones who get their own bumper stickers? Plenty of other kids have accomplishments that are just as impressive as getting straight A's. How about a bumper sticker for me? My child is reasonably good at table football. My child created some memorable graffiti in the boys' bathroom. There goes another car with my kids on the honor roll bumper sticker. That's the sixth one we've seen in the past hour. Right, that means my mother isn't the only parent who does it. No, it means that honor roll students are a dime a dozen. Anyone can make the honor roll. Then why have you only made it one time? Having proven my brain power, I decided I was ready for other life experiences. Detention isn't a life experience. I may not be on the honor roll, Francis, but I'm just as smart as you are. You just seem smarter because you know a lot of stuff. Gee, and I thought knowing stuff was a good thing. 
Knowledge doesn't make you smart. It's how you use your knowledge that counts," said the kid who invented the cheese doodle smoothie. An idea whose time has come. I have a question for you, Dad. If I got really good grades, would you put a bumper sticker on our car saying "My child is on the honor roll"? That is suppositional, I assume. Uh, what does suppositional mean? It means your report card just arrived. Oh, really? I'm telling you, it's a T-Rex. No, it's a race car. See the wheels, Teddy? It's clearly a T-Rex. You're crazy, Francis. We'll settle this. Settle what? Look right up there and tell us what you see. Well, it's obviously a cumulus cloud, and most likely a cumulonimbus. Whoa, whoa! We don't need the scientific terminology, Dipwad. Just tell us what you think the cloud looks like. Rain. What a drip! Oh, look! What? There's a news truck over there. Let's go see what's going on. Maybe we can get on TV, and maybe some famous director will see me on TV, and maybe I'll become a star. Or maybe the news truck guy is just taking a donut break. It's a muffin. Are you here for a news story? Sort of. We're shooting. Video of this intersection. The city's thinking of tearing it up and putting in a traffic circle. Care to ahem interview a local resident? Not my job. You want to get interviewed? Talk to the cameraman. He's over there. School picture guy. That's TV camera guy, kid. School picture guy. I didn't know you worked for Channel Twelve Action News. It's a new gig, my boy. And the TV station obviously values my skills because they've given me such an important assignment. But you're shooting video of a stop sign. Yes. But the proper artistry, a project can become a masterpiece. That's what he said about Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. Quite on the set, kid. So you're shooting video of this street. Ten four, amigo. Well, isn't it kind of empty? It would be more interesting with a couple. Pedestrians. Hmm. Not a bad idea, kid. You two go stroll along the sidewalk. Just act natural. Pretend it's just a normal day. We're rolling in three, two. You're in my light. Shelf. Hold it, doodlebug. Pump the brakes. This is supposed to be an everyday street scene. You're supposed to be a random passer boy. Why are you dancing around and mugging for a camera like a crazed Broadway wannabe? Because she told her to be herself. And FYI, I'm a Hollywood wannabe. Just saying, just saying. So. When will we see ourselves on Channel Twelve News? Well, I can't promise anything. Can't promise anything. But you're the camera guy. That doesn't mean I get to make decisions. Other people at the station、uh, outrank me. What other people? Get in the van, Lord Bart. Pretty much everybody. Holy cow! What is that? A dictionary? Just some notes. I realized during this past year that our social studies textbook is lame. It's out of date, poorly organized, 
and the writing is completely lacking in subtlety. I decided I could do better. I'm going to write my own social studies textbook. I've already finished the chapters on the early colonial era and the events leading to the Revolutionary War. If I do say so myself, my analysis of the First Continental Congress is particularly fascinating. I'll read you an excerpt. Ahem. <clears throat> John Adams stepped out of his carriage on a hot September. This beach used to be so clean, but why must we go to the beach? Because I say so, Peter. I'm the babysitter, and it's my job to come up with fun activities for you. Fun activities? Getting shand in my bathing trunks isn't a fun activity. Nobody calls them bathing trunks, Peter. Already, there's a grit farm in my nether regions. The first step in any beach day, Peter, is finding the perfect spot. Ah, what do you think about right here? Stop blocking my sun, Brillo head, or I'll stuff a clamshell up your nose. Let's keep looking. You never said there'd be entertainment. The sun is too hot, so go get wet. But the water is freezing. Right, it cools you off. Then the sun warms you up again. You lie in the sun. You get in the water. You lie in the sun. You get in the water all day long. How indescribably thrilling! If you want to spice things up, we can count seagulls. Here's a classic beach activity, Peter: building a sand castle. A sand castle? What do you do with it after it's done? Uh, nothing really. What happens when the tide comes in? Well, then it's gone, just like the last few minutes of my life. It might be time for a snack break. Look, Peter, I set up a horseshoe pit. Horseshoes? Isn't that dangerous? They're toy horseshoes. They're made of rubber, so nobody can get zinc long. I'm beginning to question that whole thing about horseshoes being good luck. I like this beach. Time for more sunscreen, Peter. Your mom told me to reapply this stuff every hour. It smells funny. We ran out of your stuff, so I'm using mine. Wait, what are the ingredients? Uh, zinc oxide, beeswax, cocoa butter. I'm allergic to cocoa butter. Five minutes later, you know what would be fun? Not mentioning this to your mom. Cripes, Daddy, Daddy, what's up, pal? I saw two hermits in the woods. Hermits? Uh huh. A big one and a little one. I knew they were hermits because they looked all tired and dirty. And what were these hermits doing in our backyard? Walking around, the big one had a stick. And Jimmy, remember what Mommy and I have told you about making up stories? But Daddy, son, those woods are so dense and swampy that nobody in his right mind would. What town are we in? I told you this wasn't the way back to the seventh tee. What do you mean he can't make it? I'm here already. I bought my ticket and everything. Thanks a lot, Teddy. Now I have to play by myself. There's nothing worse than playing mini golf alone. Oh, oh! Actually, yes, there is. 
Looks, Jenny. Nate is too golfing too. This will be fun, Nate. All the three of us can mini golfing together. Not so fast, Arthur. It never works when a single person hangs out with a couple. You guys are on a date. You're going to be all over each other with the baby talk and the pet names and all the jazz. What? No, we'd never do that, would we, Cuddle Cub? Never, Snoo comes. Uh huh. Here we go, three putters. Thank you. And we have eight different ball colors. Red, please. And I'll have blue because blue is color of Jenny's eyes. And I'll take hazel because hazel is the color of Arthur's eyes. We don't have hazel balls, kid. Then I'll be blue too. Oh, brother. Okay, hole number one. Who gets to go first? I think you should, Jenny. No, honey bunny, you should. Now you should because you are so sweet. But you are even sweeter. Now you are. Now you are. Your ball's special. Somebody hit a stinking ball. I think I'll be not so good. I'm not ever playing mini golf before. Just get it close to the hole, Arthur. Yes, close to hole. Quick, plunk. It's also okay to put the ball in hole, right? Nice shot, Arthur. You're amazing. I thought you said you'd never played mini golf before. It's true. But you're playing great. You're making all these awesome shots. Yeah, you're actually winning right now. Ha ha. I am. Ha. Huh. That is just total luckiness. Your ball caromed off Nate's and went in. I must destroy him. Miss it. You already made fifteen lucky shots in a row. How about he misses one? Just one. Ha! Huh. That's more like it. That ball has no chance. Oop! Wait! It hit a bump. It's curving. Oh, you must be kidding me! It can't go in. It can't possibly go in. No! 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 Plunk! Nate! Or you see that? I missed it. I can't believe Arthur's beating me. I've never seen so many lucky shots in my life. But I shouldn't let it get to me so much. It's only a stupid game of mini golf. Why do I even care? I just do. Eighteenth hole. If I make this putt, I'll tie Arthur and salvage at least a tiny shred of dignity. Click, da! I was lining up my putt on the seventeenth, and you broke my concentration. So much for dignity. Well, looks like you beat me, Arthur. That's great. Ha ha! Congratulations. Thanks, you Nate. I don't mind being runner-up. You can't win them all, you know. I'm fine with finishing second. Uh, actually, you finished third. I knew I should have kept score myself. You hurt my hand. Did you kids have fun? Yes, absolute. Come back soon. We will. Are those teeth marks? It's been a trying day. Hey, Dee Dee. Where've you been? I was looking for you. I was mini golfing with Arthur and Jenny. Ooh, was it fun? Oh, it was great. Arthur didn't miss a putt all day. Ha! Huh, that's so Arthur. Would it kill him to be a little less Arthur every once in a while? Have you ever noticed how good he is at everything? Am I sensing a little jealousy of Arthur? 
Me jealous of Arthur? No, absolutely not. He beat me at mini golf, that's all. I'm not jealous. He deserved it. I'm happy for him. Mm-hmm. You're not buying it. I'm not buying it. I didn't even look at the schedule. Who are we playing? Just deserts. Wait, what? There's another team in the league sponsored by a bakery? Yep, they're supposed to be good too. How good? Ask Chad. He keeps notes on all the teams. Chad, tell me everything you know about just deserts. Ah, oh, they began as a wedding cake business, but four years ago they started offering a wide variety of treats. They now make cakes, pies, muffins, croissants, breads, scones, and all kinds of pastries. Everyone raves about their eclairs, but give me their honey buns any day. Sweet scouting report. I just wanted to know if their pitcher has good curveball. So we've established that you're jealous of Arthur. Wow, wow. What's this established stuff? We've established nothing. Okay, then. Let's say that it appears that you're jealous of him. That's ridiculous, Dee Dee. Why would I be jealous of Arthur? Just because he's the luckiest stinking in the universe. Issues much. Just because I think Arthur is lucky, Dee Dee, that doesn't mean I'm jealous of him. Then what does it mean? Well, obviously it means that, that he's, uh, it's, it. Okay, look, during summer vacation, you're not supposed to ask questions I can't answer. That's your social studies face. Okay, I'll admit that Arthur gets on my nerves, but not all the time. There are plenty of times I like him, just fine, and I'll think, hey, Arthur's not so bad, but then if I spend too much time with him, I'll get sick of him. Know what I mean? Sure, Arthur is the pineapple lifesaver of your friendship world. Right, they're okay, but who wants a whole roll of him? Do you think you're jealous of Arthur because he's going out with Jenny? Now, I'm over the whole Jenny thing. It just ticks me off that Arthur is a tiny bit better than I am at so much stuff. He draws better, he sings better, he plays chess better. It's so aggravating. Good thing he can't compete with my smoldering sex appeal or I might really hate him. Uh-huh. Listen, Nate. I don't think it's a big deal that you're jealous of Arthur every so often. We all have an Arthur in our lives, someone we like well enough, but who we also find annoying. Really? Who's yours? Shelly Ostertag. What? But Shelly's so nice. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm going to test your theory that everybody has an author in their lives. Chad, think of someone you sort of like but also find kind of annoying. Hmm, Matt Damon. No, I mean someone who's not famous. Ben Affleck. Oh, there's a seagull over there with only one leg. That's sad. See how he can't keep up with other girls when they run along the sand? Poor guy, he's really struggling, but I trade places with him. I do it in a second. Cue over the top, anti-school rant. Because he doesn't have social studies with Mrs. Godfrey. Dad, I'm not going back to school next week. I'm taking a gap year. Kids usually do that between high school and college. 
But hey, why wait? Am I right? Why wait? Speaking of gaps. Hey, Dad, can we talk about my gap year idea? Poke. That's the first time the editorial page ever gave me the hairy eyeball. I proposed the idea of a gap year to my dad and he totally shot me down. All I was trying to tell him was that I deserve a break from the drudgery of school. What do you call the last two months? That's just the response you'd expect from somebody who went shopping for three ring binders back in July. So you're desperate not to go back to school and your dad won't let you take a gap year. Right, what about homeschooling? Hi kids, plink plonk, I'm desperate, not insane. Where are you going, Dee Dee? Clothes shopping. You've got to have the right look on the first day of school. What are you going to wear? An expression of profound disgust? I'll wear anything as long as my undies are loose and breezy. Dog left at campsite walks 1,000 miles home. Wow! Let's see if you make a sense of direction that good, Spitzy. Worf, hold still, I'm going to blindfold you. And now we'll take a long walk until we end up somewhere we've never been before. Worf, okay, Spitzy, show me what you can do. Get us home. Zip, tuck, tuck. And after you pass the gas station, take your second left. Oh, brother.